Good morning, everybody. Jen Cravasi here from Jekyll Bates. It is Sunday morning. We have a three-part spray session um, group of videos that I'm going to get out with you guys this week. The first part is going to happen this morning. Um, fairly quick and painless. I've got a really cool pattern that I want to show you guys how to spray. It is the Mutant Cicada from the Toxic Series at Jekyll Bates. Um, uses a wake bait for this particular one. Now I've already sprayed a, a purple plum iridescent gold with um, the fluorescent pink eyes. This one is going to be a little bit more of a natural presentation. We're going to use gold, but we're also going to use some greens, some moss greens. Um, I've got the colors laid out for you guys today. We're going to be primarily using Wicked Colors, uh, the Createx line of basic colors, and probably a little bit of FX and FW overlay. So the second part of the video is going to deal with stencils and that's probably going to air by Wednesday of this coming week and then the last group the third part of this video is going to be the different types of layering and then we're really going to get in depth with how to spray that how to get into um, a little bit more air control so with this one I just wanted to to give you guys a, a little bit of a tutorial on how to paint some different stuff stuff that maybe the fish haven't seen before so I've got the paints all set up over here. I've got some additional lighting. Hopefully, I'm pretty excited to see how the new lighting is going to convey onto the screen. Uh, I know I always work like I'm living in a bat cave, but it's just the light that I've got to deal with in this particular studio. It's great for me, but it doesn't always come across um, to the audience. So hopefully with additional lighting in here, we've got one, uh, let's see, got a bunch of stuff up here now. So hopefully that'll take care of it for the most part. So let me put my coffee down and show you what we're going to be using today. This is going to use a little bit of pearlized plum. I love using pearlized paints, especially if you're going to be using um, the baits in dirty water because that little extra bit of glitter is going to key those fish in and uh, maybe get you a, a couple more bites. So the pearlized line, we're going to be using the plum, the pineapple, and the key lime. Createx loves to deal with flavors in their colors. And then a little bit of pearlized white. We're going to start out with a base, opaque white. Now with the opaque white, I get a lot of questions on what do I use. This is not what came in the bottle. I make up my own. So for, per, uh, for the opaque flat paint, I'm using a blend of the Jacquard Airbrush Color Permanent. Some good old fashioned apple barrel white that I've thinned down quite a bit. It's a water based, quick drying, but it's super matte. Um, it will, if you don't mix it with other airbrush paints, it will dry and it will chip and it'll do all kinds of funky things for you. So you don't necessarily want to ever use it by itself or just water thinned. And then I use the Wicked Line of the, uh, the tenting white. So that's pretty much what we're doing there. We've got some Wicked's. We're going to use some moss green. We're going to be using the black for shading on the overlay. Fluorescent green and fluorescent yellow for the eyes. We're going to use. We're going to start out with the eyes too. Um, I'm, I'm go we're going to make our own eyes this morning. So we're going to kind of set all this stuff back into the, the color area. I'm going to tape this down. So I'm going to come back, we're going to get some masking tape, tape this little area down because when you hit this with paint, um, and I'm going to do all six because I have some other stuff lined up that I need to get done this week that's going to use some, some creativity on the eyes as well. Um, there's pressure in your air obviously, so if you just hit this, it's going to blow all over the place. We're going to tape this down. All right, so we have uh, just basically some scrap paper. This is the bottom of an invoice I just use. I, I try and recycle as much as I can when I'm um, reusing materials or if I have multi-purpose for this. Um, and scrap paper always comes in handy if you need to lay a backing down or if you have a surface that you don't necessarily want to get paint dust all over. It's just a good idea to keep that. So we've taped the, the paper down and now we've taped the eyes, uh, the, the stuff that keeps the eyes and we're going to just lay some white on. The reason we're doing this first is we want the eyes good and dry by the time we're laying them into this wake bait. So 
wanna and you can see that that's just coming up a little bit we're going to turn this way down i'm going to work between 5 and 10 psi on spraying the on the front we're going to use base white first just that flat and we don't need a whole lot because we're going to dry that we're going to heat set this Now we're going to dry this, and then we're going to come back with some fluorescent. One of the other things that you want to keep in mind, and I get asked this a lot, what do I do if my airbrush clogs? Well, you want to try and prevent that from happening as best you can. So what I've learned to do over the years is in between paints, in between colors I'm cleaning it out and the less paint that builds up on the inside of this chamber the better off you're gonna be and I usually keep this little trash can down here it just dumps off any of that excess cleaning fluid cleaning solution um, the airbrush cleaner that I use is the 5618 Auto Airs. It's Createx and Wicked. So these are these are all basically the same. They come from the same company, and it is made in the United States, which I really like. Um, buy local whenever you can. So that's what we use. Once this is cleaned out, I want to kind of use my hand as a gauge. If I'm feeling any moisture on that, then I don't necessarily want to pull paint in there yet. Get any of the little pieces or chips. When uh, when you put your finger over the top of this and you push that through, a lot of the times if there were any little floating chips that have gotten down in your airbrush, when you back flush that, it comes to the top and you just get it right out. So that also helps in keeping it from clogging. If it does clog, We'll get into that, but basically I use a, a, a quick spray through of 91% alcohol. You don't want to leave that in your chamber too long because it will eat away at the uh, protective coating on the, on the lining of this airbrush. So you just got to be real careful. You want to do that and then back that out with water and then use a cleaner. Generally, I don't have any problems. This thing has been going strong for a couple of years. Uh, I still have the same needle. I still have the uh, the same original everything in here. The spring is about ready to be replaced, but got a really cool tip on the Facebook Brotherhood of Custom uh, Crankbait Painting to use a ballpoint pen spring. So, super cool. Check that Facebook page out. It's from Michael Ornstein on Facebook. It is the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting. Obviously, it's for guys and girls alike. Um, just a really great learning page so we're gonna now that this is dried we just to the touch and you can see that I've pulled this up and it's a whole lot easier if I just leave that alone I want to kind of leave that um, and not touch it or get my hands near it and we're just gonna put that back down so I think I've decided on green since we're, we're doing a like a moss tinted gold cicada which is more of a natural match the hatch run that through and we're going to bring our airbrush now I always turn the airbrush pressure pressure back up when I'm cleaning the chamber and you always want to make sure you have a, a constant airflow and we're just going to come back over evenly spray this now while I'm doing this pattern we're also going to let this dry naturally a little bit and get those edges and then once once this dries then I come up with an exacto knife and I kind of lay my knife blade in underneath and pop that up and then just gently set that into the eye sockets on the lure and it works pretty well. 
All right, so that's got plenty of paint loaded onto the eyes. We're going to leave that alone, get it off to the side, and start priming this bait. Now I have just a tiny bit of that fluorescent green left in the chamber from doing the eyes. I'm going to hit that real light on the belly of this bait. It's not going to make a whole lot of difference. I'm just trying to clean the chamber out because I'm going to come right behind this. I'm not going to clean this out this time. I'm going to throw a little bit of pearl white on here. We're all set with the opaque. Now we're not going to be using the opaque white to prime this because we pretty much want a translucent bait, something that's going to be a little bit see-through as the light hits it because it's going to, this is a top water bait, it's just subsurface, so it's intended to swim um, right on the top wa water column. It uh, doesn't quite sit on top, sometimes it does uh, if you troll it real slow, but you can also get that to dig down just a little bit, but it throws a heck of a, which is why it gets its name, wake off of it. Um, but all we're doing now is we're just going to hit this with pearl white and bring my airbrush pressure back up. I've left it on there for the eyes. There we go. That's more like it. Just get that good and covered. And I think what I'm actually going to do here is run it till it's out. Okay, now we've got that real translucent pearl base and on the belly of this and probably up the sides a little bit because the intention here is to get a fade and if you work with wet on wet paint most of the time you'll get a much better much more even fade on this okay we've got a little bit of fluorescent green on the belly we've got the pearl pineapple um, run it up the side. I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of fluorescent on the nose. And there you have it. Maybe just a streak going down its back. Now you don't want to load too much paint on this because with the air pressure it's going to start to blow paint all over it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a real quick heat set just to get it tacky enough to where the paint will still bind with it when we when we fade those other colors in but we're not going to completely dry it so it's we're probably going to get it like maybe 50 60 percent dry all right cleaned out our chamber we've heat set this a little bit the next color we're going to be using is a pearlized pearl lime now on camera, I'm hoping you can notice a little bit of difference, but I'm not going to guarantee that you can because on camera, the tent might look just like that pineapple, but I promise you it's a little bit darker. And all we're going to do is continue from about the middle of the bait, where the lateral line would be, up around the top. So we're just going to fade in a little bit darker of a paint. And once this is clear coated and it's dry, I promise you, we'll be able to notice a difference. And we're going to just continue on. I'm going to pull out a little bit of leaf green just to give a little bit of contrast around the face. Okay, next color is going to be our plum. Now we're not going to use much plum at all. Just going to be to accent. We're going to accent, I'm sorry, accent. The next color we're going to use is just a little bit of pearl plum. We're not going to use much at all for this particular color. All I'm looking to do with this is just accent into the cheeks just a bit. I've turned my pressure down 
and I'm coming at an angle where I'm not necessarily going to blow the color back onto the bait. I'm approaching it from this side, from the right side. And you can see just, just a little bit. Not much at all. We'll do the same with the other side. Come at it from here. So that you can see we just have it on the cheeks. Don't want much more than that. And then maybe just a little bit on the belly. And that's it. I went ahead and heat set that in between the, uh, the camera shots. I don't know if you guys can see this. There's a little bit of cracking up top and a lot of times when you have uh, a thicker wet paint layer um, or an opaque on top of a translucent or your heat is weird or you've got humidity in the air or the planets line up wild, you get a little bit of crack as your paint dries. Now some people think that that looks cool. Some people think that ah, I just don't want that in there. Another one of the questions that I can knock out right now is how do I correct mistakes? So one of the things that I've been able to do is just add in. We're not going to touch the bait. We're not going to repaint with our leaf green or our key lime. We're pretty much done with that. Pearl plum is done. But we're using, uh, you'll see that I go from lightest colors to darkest colors and the accent colors. So the next color that I'm going to be using is a Wicked Detail Moss Green. And that's going to be in the top of the head, around the eyes, and just a little bit over top here, over top of this bait. That should take care of that accent and the cracking all in one. We're going to load just a little bit of the detail moss green in, just a few drops. A little goes a long way, probably too much on three drops, so two probably would have been okay. And then at a bit more of a distance, and look at that. That crack is completely gone. Get a little bit closer here. We're laying in those eyes. One of the reasons that I'm doing the eyes dark around the sockets is that when we lay in that fluorescent green, the contrast in this dark color and that light color green is really going to stand out. It's really going to pop. So that's one of the things you want to do and I'm just going to bring a little bit of accent over the back here, er, back area here. Not too much. We also want to give just a little bit of, of an illusion of three-dimensional and we can kind of come up around the back side of this gill. but not much, just enough to where that airbrush paint is on the back of this thin plate on the gill. Now our cracking's gone. We have the dark back accent. Don't want to go black because that's what's going to be on the, uh, on the stenciling. We're going to use an R-tool stencil that I've already cut up and prepped for this. Now the next thing we're going to do is lay in a little bit of gold pearlescent splatter just to give this an additional pop. The moss green does not have any. Even though we have plenty of pearl in the underlays, we've kind of gone over it with a few different shades. So the next thing that we want to do is kind of define that gold. Okay, I've got just a little bit of gold in here. We're going to back off of the bait just a little bit probably have that a little bit too close. I've got a lot left to do today, so just add that real light. A little bit on the belly. And we're done with the gold. 
hardest working shop dog alive. You too, Casey. Next step where we're going to lay that stenciling in. I keep a lot of pre-cuts. Now what you're seeing here is just kind of like a hodgepodge of um, various stencils that I've purchased online and those are linked in the description below as well, the art tools. Um, and for this, I'm pretty much just going to be using almost a lace pattern. And then there's one more that I'm looking for. This one right here. We are all set. And I don't think I'm going to need that one. But I just kind of keep them together. I have a stenciling section over here. You can see I've got um, quite a few more. So walking back over to this. First thing I want to do is lay in just a, a stencil and get this lace. I don't know if you've ever seen a cicada's wings. It almost looks like a lace pattern. Um, I'll, I'll flash a picture down here now. But it definitely has that lace pattern to it. Um, and you can kind of get close with something that looks like this. Okay, so we're just going to hand lay this over as we come through with some moss green. And again, this is an Artool stencil. We're just going to hand lay this over and I've got some uh, moss green, detail moss green. I really just want a light overlay to where when you lift that up you can really see that pattern. But you don't want to do overkill. You don't want to really blast the paint down on that. You just want to keep it light. We're going to do the same with the back here. It doesn't have to be the exact same placement as you had before. But you, you do need to make sure that you either have some helping hands or if you don't have anything like this and you don't have the stability when you're putting something flat on here, you can actually lay, you can do one side at a time, lay it down on a piece of paper. But since we do have the helping hands, we're going to utilize that. I'm just going to go up once and back down. Now you've got that lace pattern on there. I'm going to flip this over. thing about these helping hands is that you can really manipulate and move around what you're working on. And the same here. Now you've noticed that I'm not getting the cheeks. We're leaving those alone on purpose. But I'm bringing that stencil right up to the edge of the, the gill plate. You want to try and lay this down as flat as you can. Wake baits are pretty easy to work with. Your rounder baits like square bills and um, some of the other stuff that's out there, the, the deeper divers, are a little more difficult. And I'm holding this about maybe three to four inches off the top just to get that, that real light overlay in a lace pattern. Okay, and that's pretty much what we're dealing with. The lure off to the side, and I've got this down. Now I could do this. It's you know it's probably going to be easier if I demonstrate how to properly lay in a pattern with a stencil like this, where you you pretty much don't want to blast paint into this. You just want to kind of walk around the edges with your brush. 
A lot of this has to do with trigger control. Trigger control is probably the single most important aspect of laying and stencil work that you can possibly do. People ask me if I change the needles. Most of the time, no, because I'm doing so many repetitious in a run, like all that stuff over there has got to get done and they've all got patterns on them. So just to keep from having to switch out or use a, you know, other airbrushes I've got over here, I just do all in one. But what I've learned, at least it works for myself, and if you guys have different methods, some of you guys that have been around a long time that are doing this professionally for a living, um, but what I've learned is that if you practice trigger control, because you're going to get an airflow, okay, and then just work on bringing that back. And you can see, even <laughs> you can see even with very little air pressure, it's enough and it's going to push paint around. So let me show you how I would do something like this, how we're going to approach it. Um, the color that I'm going to end up using, I could have done a, uh, a black, which I'm still going to use a little bit of, but I'm also kind of keen on, if we're doing a zombie pattern or a mutant pattern, just a couple of drops of this. This is a deep red. This is the Createx, but I also, it's a lot thicker, but this Auto Air, the cherry red, is super dark as well. Um, I really like doing that, using that color for like a blood accent or a, a, an exposed muscle or flesh. So when I'm talking about trigger control, white piece of paper, and as you pull it back, you can see how fast that paint's going to come out. So what you need to learn to do is work with your airbrush and you just make simple patterns. Obviously, I'm not a Picasso with this. Okay, just practice control. You can also com practice your bursts. Just to where you understand what kind of pressure you're dealing with. And the star patterns are fun to do. When you're working with stencils, you don't want to spray here in the middle. I mean, it works, but it's not what you're looking for. What you're looking to do, something more similar to this, where you just want to take this airbrush. You want to kind of get down, but again, you don't want to get too close on it because you're going to spray it out like that. So you want to look at where that point is where you're not doing that anymore. You want to come up like that. And then you want to work just around the edges of this stencil. So that when you lift that up, that's your finished product right there. That's what you're looking to do. You want a, a shaded area that's super dark along the edges, and then the paint is going to do it for you. It, you don't have to really do anything or angle it. You just want to lay it in, but you want to walk the edges of your stencil. Whatever stencil you're using, if your intention is on doing a pattern like this correctly, walk the edges of that stencil around so that that's your product and not this. Big difference in how that looks. Big difference. So that's what we're going to do on this. We're just going to do a couple of areas. I'm going to probably do one on each side here. I'll lay this down so that you guys can see show that. you guys. We'll do this one right here. All right, like I said, we're just going to walk this around the edges of this stencil. Until we have that laid in. And that's what it looks like. Let's finish with something like this.
Then we got one more side to do. So that's basically the pattern that we're looking for. And we really have a defined lace pattern at this point. So all we're going to do now is do a little bit of black on top of that. And then we're going to set the eyes in. We're going to clear coat it. Just take a quick look at that where we're at with the bait. Now I've got this moss green around the eyes, but I really want to get it just a little bit darker, so I'm going to add and pull this off the helping hands at this point because we're pretty much done with the bait, except for putting the eyes in. But I want to add just a little bit of black in here. Just on the eye sockets. because I really want as much contrast as possible on this. And there's maybe just a little hint on the back, just to give it a little bit more of a profile as it's coming across the water. All right, I've pulled the X-Acto knife out. How sharp the, the blade tip is it doesn't really matter for this. It matters, matters more when you're cutting the stencil. But all I'm doing is just moving this up underneath pulling that out and we're going to lay it in, touching it as little as possible with our fingers and primarily using just, oh come on now, Murphy's Law. If I can mess stuff up I'm gonna, there we go, just real gently putting it in to the eye socket and pressing it in. <laughs> Looks so cool. Well, these are regular old ordinary 3D eyes. I think that they probably came with a bunch of baits from Schultz at one point. And again, touch it as little as possible when you're laying it in to avoid scratching this because while this is still uncoated with no clear on it, the paint is a little bit temperamental on these eyes. That's probably the most tedious part of this whole process is laying the eyes in properly because you don't want them to gum up. Now one thing that I just did, I just put a little bit of a scratch into the paint. Again, I get asked all the time on how to correct mistakes. Keep a Sharpie laying around. I'm going to get a black Sharpie for this. And all we're going to do where that came out, you got to be real careful fill it back in. Now just to go over this pretty quick and in this in this order that's important because working from light to dark is going to save you a lot of, of hassle in the long run because it'll, number one allows you to lay in those color fades a lot easier. If you go from dark to light the light doesn't really go over the the dark very well so do it from light to dark. So we started out with pearl white, pearl pineapple, laid in some pearl lime. Then we added a little bit of moss green. Now I, I used a little leaf green in this. It's not necessary because you're going to come over that leaf green with the moss green on the head. Um, but just to give it a little bit of definition and just a little bit of a, a better shading. Then we did some satin gold. Pearl plum on the cheeks and on the throat. And then laid in that second layer with the deep red. I'm going to leave the links in the description below on where you can get these Createx and Wicked Colors. Super easy to get a hold of. We used an Art Tool stencil in lace. We avoided the cheek area. Our eyes were done before anything was touched on the bait and that's just to make sure that this has enough time to dry properly and not be tacky. Okay, we use an X-Acto knife to pull that up. Heat setting in between colors on this one and cleaning the chamber is key if you want to keep the clogs out. 
I'm using a general purpose duct tape masking tape. You can use painter's tape. This is less expensive and if you're trying to keep the, the paint away from your bill, this is what you use. I don't use this when I want to wrap off a section that I'm going to pull up and I want the paint underneath because this will pull paint off of a bait so I certainly don't recommend it for that. We're going to sign this bait and I'm using a Uniball Vision Elite and I use it kind of at an angle. Let's bring it back over here into the good light. And, and it leaves a nice thin there we go and the year 2018 let's clear coat it this is just a 10 pound galvanized wire this is almost too soft um, I like a little bit heavier of a gauge um, it comes in a roll let me show you that comes in a roll, 50 feet, 100 feet, the 10 pound is fine, costs about 3-4 bucks. You can pick it up at your local hardware store at Walmart. I can also leave you a link on where I get it on Amazon. So just kind of peel off as you go and keep some wire cutters. Just snip that off. And there you have it. Cheap and easy. Okay, I've used my wire cutters, the tips of them to bend these over. Almost looks like one of those Christmas, or Christmas ornament hangers that you find around the holidays. And yes, you can use those, and a lot of folks do. I like this because it's easy to kind of pinch off, and I can cut a long piece to start. And then as I go, I can get shorter. So I've crimped this closed because when I dip this into the KBS solution that's in this glass Prego jar that's got the saran wrap between it to keep it airtight. Um, I also, I don't use Bloxygen, but I do use, it's, uh, it's like a, the computer dust remover. It's basically just carbon dioxide. Anything that's not oxygen will work fairly efficiently. The Bloxygen from KBS is probably the best that you can use because it's chemically developed to complement keeping the air and oxygen off of the solution, off this clear coat. But I've crimped this off and I'm also going to add before, now normally I add in this drip wire after the fact, but these little um, these little wake baits have a funky tail eyepiece and often you'll find that that doesn't go on very easily once you've already dipped the bait because you can't really touch the bait after you've started the clear coat process. So I crimp it on both ends. I'm going to hang it just like this and let's get it dipped. Okay, last step of the process but also a very important one. You can see that this is forming a tight seal. It's just saran wrap. Um, doesn't have to be the name brand, just anything that's going to look like that and can stick down over this is going to help you out. And you want this to make sure, you want to make sure that that's a nice, easy liquid that it hasn't started to thicken. And this is a new jar. You always transfer it when you get it. I'm just going to stick that down in. And you'll see it starts to float up. That's why I said you really want to keep this crimped so it doesn't pop off that eyelet. And you see that I've done that nice and slow. And because this has a wide bill, I'll bring it over to the other lip and you can see me tilting this. Let's see if I get you a better view. You want the clean, the clear coat to drain down off of the bill as best as you can and do the other side and then you can just kind of reapply your solution off the bill since you've kind of stuck it to the side there. Pull it out slow. I always bring my, my glass jar over with me to the strip wire and we're going to hang it. And it's going to sit for about 24 hours. You want this to completely dry. It will stay tacky and soft, but once it's dry, 
you, I, I have not found a product that beats it. It doesn't yellow. It's hard as a rock. Um, if I use something that has a little bit more texture on the bait, then I'll double coat it. Or if I'm making baits for somebody that's using them to target pike or any kind of toothy critter, musky, then we'll two or three. The problem with multiple coats of clear coat is that it's going to change the weight of the bait. Most baits and blanks are designed to swim at a certain weight. So that's why you always want to be consistent. You don't want to clear coat the bait and not the bill. Um, make sure your clear coat is even and dipping it is the most effective thing that I've found. Now, now that we've got that on, I can go ahead and turn this on, get some airflow in here. It's going to suck all this nasty stuff right out the door. And um, that's it, folks. I'm going to show you the finished product in a few hours and happy casting. Come, we'll never know